Missy is skating on the track for the New York Shock Exchange. It's number two, Ace of Skates. Number six, Jonathan R. Number seven, Ronnie Mako. Number 11, Rinkworm. Number 14, Mullen Brando. Number 24, Atticus Flinch. Number 40, Wolfgang. Number 42, Jeffrey. Number 47, Abe Drinken. Number 61, Filthy McNasty. Number 241, Ladies Night. Number 517, T-Stop Tornado. 1275, Jimmy Rage. 4CE, Vader. 1, Banana on Skates. 13, Psycho Billy. 19, Kilbert Blythe. 88, Jack Rabbit. 422, William Tell Me Lies. And 666, Adam Antichrist. This is, of course, a full roster and not necessarily everyone who's on the bench for this game. And for the gatekeepers, we have number 11, Debaucherous Prime. 13, High Pains Drifter, who uh, skates by Drifter. Number 21, Kurt Mangle. 24, Nat King Kill. 68, Batwing. 73, Sweet Tooth. 82, Percy Control. 88, Short Knox. 216, Juke Blocks Hero. 314, Double XL. 5150, Inquadable Hulk. I'll probably screw that one up. 0 AD, Zombie Jesus. 86 D, Wrecking Bill. L7, Magnum PIMP. 1, The Saint. 33, No Gus, No Glory. 100, Oodles of Brutal. 217, No Affection. 2020, Specs Offender. And EP2, Shango Fett. And we're ready for the first jam. Lined up on the line for New York Shock Exchange is uh, number six, Jonathan R. I believe that's Prime, Optimus Prime on the line for the gatekeepers. Jammers hit the pack at about the same time, but Jonathan R is out and not lead forearm. Like Prime is almost through, uh, takes a block from number 42 from the shock exchange and uh, ends up being recycled in the pack. And he's through now and he's lead. Calls off the jam immediately. So he did it in time, just barely. <laughs> 31 seconds in that jam. <laughs> And we're still at 0-0. Zero, zero. <laughs> like a number 24, Nat King Kill skating for the gatekeepers, jamming and for the gatekeepers. Rinkworm shaking hands with Nat King Kill on the line for New York Shock Exchange. 4-3 uh, pack advantage for St. Louis. Looks like uh, Jeffrey is taking a seat in the box for the second jam. A good... Drifter, Magnum, Wrecking Bill, and uh, I believe Percy in the pack for the gatekeepers. Wow, just leaping back and forth through the pack. And then uh, 86D from St. Louis takes Rinkworm down hard to the inside just before turn three. He's finding his way back into the middle of the pack. Number 24, St. Louis, is out, but not your lead jammer. That's actually Duke Blocks Hero, not Percy in the pack for, for uh, St. Louis. Rinkworm meeting a huge three wall of defense from St. Louis at the front of that pack, and he is taken down and recycled all the way to the back of the pack. Meanwhile, I believe that might have been <laughs> Mullen Brando. Yes, it's Mullen Brando takes down uh, number 24 for St. Louis, the jammer. But Nat King Kill is through. Looks like he got five points on that jam, on that pass. That. So Rinkworm so. uncharacteristically still held in the pack. Two all of St. Louis at the front now as their jammer enters the back of the pack. See how many I got before it was called. Looks like four more points for the gatekeepers. So that, that scoreboard's gonna read nine in a second here. Yeah, I, I think the board might be off. It looks like nine for St. Louis, zero for Shock Exchange, just over 27 minutes on the clock in this first half. And uh, as many men's derby skaters as are available right now, filling this room, watching this game, heavily anticipated all day by everyone. It's Atticus Flinch on the line for New York Shock Exchange. Well, wait, wait to see who's on the line for the gatekeepers. I think it's Debaucherous Prime for St. Louis. So. Wow, and he leaps around the outside of that pack. He's got one to pass from New York Shock Exchange, ducks around the back of Ronnie Mako, and he's your lead jammer. That's actually a short knocks for the gatekeepers. Oh, why did I think I saw 11? You guys, <laughs> uh, St. Louis has difficulty with the contrast of their jerseys, or we have difficulty reading <laughs> their jerseys because of low contrast in this light. So apologies when we get it wrong. 
And uh, Short Knox is through again for four points on that pass. And he calls it off. So, so far, uh, gatekeepers have a little bit of a lead. 14-0 uh, to zero right now and a uh, little over 26 minutes left in the half. Jonathan R. on the line for New York Shock Exchange. And uh, Batwing on the line for the gatekeepers. Again, a 4-3 pack advantage to St. Louis. Right now we've got Filthy McNasty taking a seat in the penalty box for New York. I see uh, Magnum and Wrecking Bill and uh, I think that would be Drifter and uh, also, juke blocks in the pack for the gatekeepers. New York makes a wall in the back of the pack, and they are trusting Jonathan to find his own hole, and he does. He's the, not that uh, far ahead of Batwing. Wow. Uh, juke blocks takes out uh, the uh, New York jo jammer. Um. And this is now a power jam for Batwing as Jonathan R. heads to the box to take a seat with Billy McNasty. Batwing's coming up pretty fast in the back of the pack now, already scoring, and he's through. <laughs> Chased by Vader, but Vader has to let him go. He gave him a little what's up at the end of that. <laughs> but St. Louis successfully stops the pack. Wow, and so St. Louis uh, hems up Maul and Brando on the inside to try and create a hole for their jammer. Uh, to no effect at first, but now he's making his own holes past the New York pivot at the front of the pack. He's taken to the inside, and uh, <laughs> Drifter tries to help him out and get him through. Drifter is now going to go take a seat in the box as well. A full, full five points for Batwing on that pass, and he's already scoring again. When, when Batwing is on his game, he is really on his game. Filthy McNasty rejoins the pack. He's working in the back with Vader. And he and Magnum PIMP uh, exchange some taps and slaps <laughs> just four. to make sure that they're, they're clear. Nothing went wrong at the end there. Four more points for Batwing on that, and a streak from the Magic City. Misfits jumped out on the track to high-five him before he returns to his bench. Like New York Stock Exchange still at zero. St. Louis has 28. Jonathan R. standing in the penalty box right now. And uh, it's, uh, Optimus Prime on the line for the gatekeepers. We've got what like, looks to be a pack advantage to New York right now with two blockers in the box for St. Louis. And Prime is through, and he's lead. He made easy work of Jeffrey and Ronnie Mako at the front of the pack. Here comes Jonathan R. through the pack. He scoots completely untouched through the outside. He is not lead, but ready to score. Prime is a wily both horizontally and vertically. He gets down low faster than anybody I've ever seen. <laughs> From standing straight up to down low, just swoop. Number 11, Rinkworm on the line now to jam for New York Shock Exchange. And that's 24, Nat King kill for uh, the gatekeepers. Two blockers from each team sitting in the penalty box. So light packs, two and two. And we're at 30 points for St. Louis. So far, zero for the shock exchange. Jeffrey and Vader take a slow start for New York at the beginning of the pack. Magnum and Wrecking Bill alone in the pack for uh, St. Louis. Abe Drinken also looking out for the rest of their uh, crew there in St. Louis. Oh, both wow, jammers both down. Both jammers <laughs> take a fall in turn two after one-two blocking from each team's blockers. Rinkworm, however, jukes and jives his way up to the front of the pack. He has one to pass, takes down the uh, pivot for St. Louis, and is forced to re-enter. It's a Magnum PIMP there at the pivot. Lead jammer Rinkworm. He finally put some points on the board at the oh, shock exchange. Abe but Drinken almost hits him, but it's a miss timing wise. And now the. Uh, Nat King Kill is uh, re entering the pack. As soon as he does, Rinkworm calls it off from turn two. I think that's the uh, first points on the board for the New York shock exchange. They got two to Nat Zero on that one. It's like a short knocks jamming again for St. Louis. First blood for New York. Ladies night, number 241, will jam for New York. <laughs> a very loud cheering section for St. Louis. They have some uh, rabid fans, if you will. 
<laughs> well, they've got more than just their own rabid fans. I think throughout the course of the tournament, as people have realized that this might be an unseating of an undefeated team, people are pretty excited to come and cheer for the, the young upstart league. Yeah, I've seen quite a few people, uh, quite a few people with gatekeeper shirts on who I don't recognize. Ladies' night is almost through. He's got one to pass, and the, the one that he has to pass turned out to be St. Louis's jammer. He's being sent to the box. Uh, Short Knox has lead, and he's approaching his uh, first uh, scoring pass. He gets through uh, unopposed, pretty much, on the outside line. Pack advantage right now to St. Louis. Got a wall of uh, filthy McNasty and T-Step Tornado at the front. Atticus Finch joins them. Filthy is in the back handling double XL. And he's through again. That was five points on that pass. A lot of one-on-one -on -one going on in the pack right now to distract New York from being able to block that jammer. Short knocks in the middle of that pack. <laughs> wow, a huge leap to try and avoid a block. There's no pack, but uh, he's yielding anyway. T-Stab Tornado tries to take a hit on him on turn four, but he's through with five points. St. Louis up to 45 points now, a two with the New York Stock Exchange. 25 seconds left in this jam as uh, New York's jammer re-enters the pack, slides around almost completely unnoticed. Ladies' night is not your lead <laughs> jammer, clearly. That was his first pass, though, so no damage done. Short knocks, goes down, calls it. We well, did get three points on that, though. Score now 48 St. Louis to two shock exchange. 19-22 left in the half. Jonathan R. will jam next for New York. And one blocker for each team sits in the penalty box. It's a bat wing on the line for the gatekeepers. Just over 19 minutes rolling down in this period. Refs indicating where the pack is. They're a little bit strung out between turns one and two. Wow. Uh, <laughs> battle at the front of that pack between Magnum PIMP and Jonathan R, but he lets him go, and Jonathan R is your lead jammer. That wing's through now. Pile up just after turn two. Again, Magnum PIMP is just nailing Jonathan R, and Jonathan calls off the jam. Looks like he got two on that one. Five points for New York Shock Exchange and 48, for, no, 49 <laughs> for <laughs> St. Louis Gatekeepers. Uh, correction, that was three points on that jam. Ladies' night on the line for, oh well, wait, oh, I'm sorry. Jerseys are hard. I believe that's Rinkworm on the <laughs> line for Shock Exchange. And uh, Optimus Prime on the line for the gatekeepers. We have a, a, an 11 versus an 11. Double 11 jam. <laughs> <laughs> that's Wall of New York at the front, and St. Louis gets through to try and break that up. Here comes Rinkworm. Wow. Prime is through. Prime manages to wiggle through intense blocking, trying to, you know, his own teammates trying to hold back Rinkworm. It's like he had a uh, minor back block there, is not going to be lead jammer. Two all at the front right now. It's uh, Wrecking Bill up there making sure that Rinkworm can't get through. Now three wall. That's uh, Wrecking Bill, Zombie Jesus, and. Uh, thought I knew who that was. That's Sweet Tooth up there with him. Rinkworm is finally out of the pack. He makes it just past uh, Sweet Tooth. Oh, Prime Man Wrecking Bill going to the box. This is a power jam situation for New York Chuck Exchange now. Huge wall of black trying to trap Zombie Jesus in the back of that pack to get their jammer through. It works. He's through for five points. 
That'll actually double the shock exchange score. They're now at 10 points, St. Louis at 49. Magnum PIMP watching the pack, building his three wall at the front with his teammates. Magnum PIMP is also the coach for the gatekeepers. He is a stellar player. A little bit of hammer and nail, but that helps Rinkworm get around Zombie Jesus. He'll take five more points. No pack. Once again, we've got a no pack call. Wall of St. Louis in the front, wall of New York in the back. In, in lieu of trying to isolate a blocker, they've decided to just let St. Louis run away. And Rinkworm jukes around Zombie Jesus and Magnum PIMP. Calls off the jam. Prime's going to start in the box for the gatekeepers on this jam. And that brings the score up to 20 for New York Shock Exchange, 49 for St. Louis gatekeepers. Just over 15 minutes left. We're at the halfway point in the first half of this game. Jonathan R. on the line for New York. Uh, power jam situation will last all of a few fe uh, seconds as the St. Louis jammer rejoins the pack. Here comes Jonathan R. leaping past one skater from St. Louis. He gets briefly spun, and he just struggles his way past the two frontmost blockers. He's your lead jammer. Uh, pack was strung out about a uh, quarter, quarter of the track there for a second. Looks like Percy's going to the box. Magnum PIMP. No, I'm sorry. Um, Percy Control taking a seat in the box for St. Louis. Right now, three wall of New York Shock Exchange is really effectively holding Prime in the back of the pack. Yeah, Wrecking Bill's back there trying to take care of that. And so is Drifter. Meanwhile, Jonathan R. leaping through, makes it around the outside while his blockers distract St. Louis. Okay. He took five points for that pass. Prime has got to get through here and then stop the bleeding. Jonathan R. quickly closing up this gap that his teammates started building. Prime's now through the pack. Yep. Jonathan R. managed to get through one more time on that. Closing the gap. Uh, shock exchanger now at 34, St. Louis 49. Looks like we have 13 minutes and 47 seconds left in the game. Uh, was that an official timeout? Yes, we are now uh, having a team timeout, St. Louis, which I think is, you know, <laughs> relatively smart right now. There's a 10-point difference in this game right now, 49 St. Louis, 39 Shock Exchange. They're going to have a little talk about protecting their lead. Yeah, it was, a, it was interesting. St. Louis pretty much scored all of their points in the first few jams, and then New York Stock Exchange scored all of their uh, points in the last few jams. So, On this very brief team timeout, we would like to thank you, the DNN viewer. DNN is volunteer-powered, viewer-supported. We can't do anything that we do without your help and your love and some of your spare change. No amount is too small. If you have the ability, please donate to DNN if you're enjoying all of the tournament play that we've brought you this weekend from California, from Atlanta, from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Please support DNN. We would love to thank all of you that have contributed, volunteered, donated your time and money to help with this effort. It is you that makes it possible for us to bring you all of this fantastic derby action. So thank you. Nat King kills on the line for the gatekeepers. And it looks like Ladies Night is on the line for Shock Exchange. Bearded St. Louis pivot at the back of the pack, waiting for Ladies Night. Looks like Magnum PIMP. Oh, he holds him effectively as uh, St. Louis takes lead jammer. Bearded is, bearded is a relative turn when you're talking about the gatekeepers this weekend. <laughs> Some dude with a black beard. Yeah. <laughs> Describes about two-thirds of the team at the moment. Filthy McNasty waiting there for the St. Louis jammer who barrels past him on the inside. He's juking around every New York blocker and calls off the jam. So, uh, four points for Nat King Kill of the gatekeepers. Apparently that uh, timeout was useful. Looks like the score is now 53 to 39. Gatekeepers are in the lead. We have almost exactly 13 minutes left in the first half of this game. Rinkworm is on the line for New York Shock Exchange. 
I believe that's short knocks in the line for the gatekeepers. So again. It looks like it. It's an 8 8 and not an 11. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> From this angle, it's hard to tell. It's a slow start there. I think Shock Exchange trying to get their uh, blocker back into the pack from the penalty box. Racing up the outside. Uh, he takes a hit from Jonathan R, but Short knocks is through and lead jammer. It's a very quick work of it. It's about to approach again. I'm not sure that the shock exchange has looked behind to see where he is. Oh, they see him now. Jeffrey and Vader help their jammer out of the back of the pack, but right into a wall of St. Louis gatekeepers who nailed him on the outside of turn four. Oh, tries to take an assist from Wrecking Bill and gets hit by Jonathan R. A little bit of jammer on jammer action. Rinkworm is right behind the St. Louis jammer. I'm sure Knox is uh, taking his time calling it off. Oh, someone's lost a toe stop. That's one of those big toe stops, too. So the scoreboard's sitting at 58 for St. Louis and 39 for the Shock Exchange. Just over 11 minutes left on the clock. Looks like the momentum's turned back in St. Louis's direction again for the moment. Uh, bat wings on the line. Ladies night for New York Shock Exchange. <laughs> Pack advantage for New York right now. If, uh, I think it's oh. Magnum PIMP sitting in the box for St. Louis. It looks like Shock Exchange is calling a timeout. Ten fifty nine on a stopped clock. Yeah, I think that is Magnum. It's hard to tell with the beards from the side. Yep, that's him. <laughs> Which black beard is it? Which one? I have to wait until they smile or make a facial expression, then I can tell who it is. <laughs> I have a little bit easier of a time telling um, who the clean shaven skaters are yeah. on St. Louis because <laughs> there's only two. <laughs> Well, three. Three on this bench. <laughs> so, yeah. Teams are lining up again. So, Batwing and Ladies Night on the line right now. New York taking a knee. St. Louis backing up just a little bit behind them. <laughs> Ladies Night had a pretty good showing at the game earlier today. Here come the Jammers. Oh! Ladies Night making it through on the inside. Takes a little bit of a fall in turn two. Looks like he's going to take a seat in the penalty box. This is now a power jam for St. Louis. Batwing is recycled to the back of the pack. New York with a wall up front. St. Louis comes right up to try and make a hole in that. Zombie Jesus trying to break up the wall for his jammer. And uh, St. Louis jumps right around Abe Dricken. Bowing through. He's not lead jammer, though. He's a minor, uh, minor elbow. Here goes Filthy McNasty to join his jammer in the box. And Magnum's back in the pack. Oh, somebody's being sent off for a major, and the ref is ticked Whoa. off. Magnum PIMP nailing Abe Drinkin to make a hole for his jammer, and it works. He gets Five points. <laughs> Shango, Shango is standing on the sideline waving signs at Batwing, screaming. 4-2 <laughs> two pack advantage right now for St. Louis. Abe Drinkin and Mullen Brando. Ladies Knight is standing forth. in the box. There's Mullen Brando to beat. He jukes around the outside of him. He'll take five more points. Here comes... Ladies' night to the back of the pack, runs up against a wall of St. Louis in the back. He's now being forced back between turns one and two by Magnum PIMP. Batwing scoring again has one one blocker to get around. That was Abe, and he does not. And he does. Four wall of St. Louis in the back <laughs> that he's trying to juke around now. Now Batwing is not lead. He cannot call it off. But if uh, Ladies' night gets lead, he can. And he's not lead either. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> That one's going to skate backwards and stare at him a little bit, though. There's Three only a, seconds yeah. left in this jam. He's just, just having jammer fun on at this jammer point. action. 
Batwing almost takes Ladies Night to the outside, and the jam ends on time. So we have almost exactly nine minutes left in this half. Score is 73 to 39, St. Louis in the lead. Jonathan R is on the line for New York Shock Exchange. And that's Debaucherous Prime on the line for the gatekeepers. 4-3 pack advantage again for St. Louis. That's right, jeggings. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to call them power jeggings from now on. Does anybody remember um, Fisty's speed ruffles? I'm going to call these Jonathan R's power jeggings. <laughs> I think Chrome Molly just added a uh, drinking roll. <laughs> Here comes Jonathan R through the pack. He's taken to the inside just before turn three. Oh, Prime almost through. Gets spun around. Abe Drinken spun him very nicely. <laughs> Prime's just, just got Abe to get around. Oh, but the wow. shock. <laughs> Jonathan R takes Prime out on turn four as soon as he has the opportunity. Oh, Prime trying to take a trying to take a whip from Drifter. But wow. uh so much action going on in the pack, I'm not even sure how to cover all of it, but Vader just took Prime down <laughs> in turn four. Vader and uh, Abe both uh, canceled that whip out. <laughs> just Really, really nice opening and shutting the door at the front of the pack for St. Louis. Um, effectively holding back Jonathan R, recycling him back into the middle of the pack over and over again. He's got two to beat on St. Louis. He's desperately trying to make his own hole and gets taken to the inside between turns three and four. He's now being sent to the box. No, I'm sorry. Jonathan. What did I see? He's lead jammer. How about the opposite of being sent to the box? He's lead jammer. <laughs> He's, a, he's only got 30 seconds left, though. That first pass was an effort. Abe Drinken taking Prime to the outside on turn two. Prime is out, but not lead. Like Abe was sent to the box for whatever he did there. Jonathan R. let go on 20 feet and calls off the jam. That was a Cheering for himself at the crowd. <laughs> that was a, a rough first, first pass. He... Deserves whatever encouragement he gets from the crowd for that one. The score is now 73 St. Louis to 43 for the shock exchange. Six minutes and 22 seconds left in the half. And that's Nat King kill on the line for St. Louis. Rinkworm number 11 for New York shock exchange. If you're just joining us, New York in black, St. Louis in white. Just over six minutes left in the first half of this game. St. Louis 73, New York shock exchange, shockingly 43. Oh, Night King Kill hops through the, the center there. Just right around T-Stop Tornado at the front of that pack. New York at a serious pack disadvantage right now with two blockers in the box. The holes are easier to find for St. Louis, and there's a three wall of St. Louis at the front making things extremely difficult for Rinkworm. He's got one to pass right now and a whiff from, uh, I believe, Magnum PIMP yep. lets him through. You're going to hit... Wow. Nat, Nat chose not to call it off at that point. Um. And good thing, because it looks like Rinkworm is going to go take a seat in the penalty box. Right now, Filthy McNasty and uh, Abe Drinken standing in the box, ready to re-enter the pack. Power Jam St. Louis. Oh, we do have, uh, I, I believe the uh, Shock Exchange has their entire pack on the floor. St. Louis only has two. Dueling walls at the front of that pack, and uh, St. Louis trying to block their own way. That's just uh, Zombie Jesus and Sweet Tooth in the pack for St. Louis, but I say, I say just slightly because they are amazing blockers. Nat King Kill watching the bench, watching the block, the box rather. Makes his way easily around the last blocker in the pack for New York. <laughs> Slips right around T-Stab Tornado and Abe Drinken. He'll take five points for that pass. Well, you, can see, you can see him pause there for a second, take a deep breath, and just shoot around him. 
Here comes Nat. Philly McNasty is shaking at him a little, and he takes a hit from a teammate as Nat jukes around the inside. So he did get three points on that. So, so that'll bring the score to 85 uh, for St. Louis and 44 for the New York Shock Exchange. There's only three minutes and 45 seconds left in the first half of the game. Ladies' night is on the line for New York Shock Exchange. The yeah, gatekeepers are starting with Sweet Tooth and uh, looks like Magnum in the box. Pack advantage to New York. <laughs> Apparently have an official timeout. During official timeouts, we like to tell you special secrets. <laughs> and uh, our special secret right now is that Baskerville University has new training camps coming up. I know that you've heard us speak to you before about Baskerville University coaches Carmen Getzum and Wiley Peyote, as well as Eric Roth. They are dedicated to helping leagues all over the world refine their derby expertise on and off the track. They offer classes tailored to suit your league's individual needs at any skill level. You can, mer you can learn more at BaskerilleU.com. July 16th and 17th in Ellensburg, Washington. A flat and bank track camp coming up August 20th through 21st in Colorado Springs. September 9th through 11th in Billings, Montana. There is a camp. And next February in Hawaii, save your pennies to attend Laid on the Track. Register at fastgirlu.com. It's like a short knocks versus ladies night on the jam line. Oh, wow. Unbelievable. <laughs> Short knocks through quick for lead. All the way up the inside like it was a hallway and not a hole. <laughs> Ladies' Night has one to beat in Zombie Jesus. They're battling at the front of that oh. pack. He bounces off of Ladies' Night's butt as Ladies' Night makes it out, but not lead. A for effort. <laughs> <laughs> B for bouncy. Yeah, B for bouncy. Oh, Short knocks takes a hit, bounces off, does not go out of play. That he was didn't a move Vader, but he moved him out of the way. He's, he's, he started calling it off well before uh, Ladies' Night hit the pack, but the referee did not see him. I think, I think the Shock Exchange actually got three points on that, um, and they only gave uh, one to the gatekeepers. Just under three minutes on the clock in this first half. Jonathan R. lines up for New York. And Batwing again for the gatekeepers. We have a, the score is currently 88 St. Louis to 47 for the Shock Exchange. New York Pack starts on a knee. Pack advantage again to New York 4-2. Which makes it really easy for Jonathan to just swim up the inside. He's your lead jammer. Ooh. That wing's having some trouble on the back of the pack there. One more to pass, two more to pass. Billy McNasty taking Batwing to the outside. He takes a whip from his teammate and tries to leap past Abe Drinkin. It's good, and he's out of the pack. Meanwhile, five points for Jonathan R., and he's uh, making his way right up to the back of the pack again. Filthy McNasty trying to hold the backmost St. Louis blocker off of him, but uh, number 73, Sweet Tooth, manages to take him to the inside. It's like I only got one point on that pass. He had to call off because Batman was about to start scoring. 88 for St. Louis and 52 to 53 for New York Stock Exchange. Less than a minute and a half on the clock. This could be the last jam it's like in short, the first half. <laughs> short knocks jamming again for St. Louis. And Rinkworm for Stock Exchange. Three on three in the pack. That's a juke blocks drifter and a completely fill. one on one in the pack leaves a sort of Z shaped empty hole for oh. both jammers to try and fly through. New York makes it all the way through. Wink worm is, rink worm is your lead jammer. It's like a shock exchange skitters being uh, sent off the pack. That's Vader. Off the track, if you will. Short knocks now through. He's obviously not lead. 
Here comes Rinkworm sneaking behind his teammate. He slips right around the right side of Drifter. He makes his own hole on the inside to pass one more skater and then calls off the jam as he falls. So adjusting the scoreboard right now. Looks like the period is actually up. And the score at the half is 90 for St. Louis and 55 for the shock exchange. Some people were predicting a score like this, but I still feel like it's a bit of a shot heard around the world. There are several teams here um, relatively gleeful over these results <laughs> after years of taking a beating at the hands of the New York Shock Exchange. So, um, you know, there's a lot of excitement in this room, but obviously that kind of a point spread, that kind of a deficit um, for a team as skilled as New York Shock Exchange not necessarily too deep a hole for them to dig out of in the second half. St. Louis is a very, very smart team, so I'm sure there will be some serious discussion in the, um, in the locker room at this point. I'm, I, don't, I don't know the shock exchange very well, but I assume that they, are, they seem to be quite strategic as well, so it'll be interesting to see what happens after the half is up. Now that we have a moment in this halftime, Roxy Horror would like to take a moment to talk to you about one of our fine DNN sponsors who make everything we do possible. I've seen a lot of green wheels out there, so I think I'm going to talk about Adam Wheels. Adam's first official hybrid wheel is here. What floor do you skate on? It doesn't matter. Poisons will grip anywhere. Poisons are available now in slim width and with aluminum alloy hubs. I actually uh, skate on juke wheels myself. Um, I know a lot of the gatekeepers are skating on those today because it's their team colors. They're a perfect flat track derby. The Juke 2.0 allows the skater to maneuver, speed up, and slow down much easier. They also allow for quicker hockey stops and faster recovery. Try some today from Adam Wheels. There's absolutely a reason that they are the official wheel of Wolf Tada and the number one choice of skaters worldwide. Even our own Justice Feelgood Marshall has said that, you know, once he went juke, he would never go back to anything else. It's all he uses now, and uh, he really enjoys the narrow. Yeah, I, I skate on just the regular. I, th I think I'm on the 2.0s. I'm not. <laughs> I skate on the original Adam Jukes, and I love them. <laughs> Adam Wheels, AdamWheels.com, and uh, go take a look at their website because they've got something really exciting coming up later this summer that you're going to want to see. Uh, you'll witness history as they completely change the face of the skate boot industry. So stay tuned. There'll be exclusive information on this exciting new product on Deanna. We would also like to thank, speaking of skate boots, Antic Skate Boots and the entire Green Monster family of products. You know and love Heartless Wheels. You cannot obviously get enough of Gumball Toe Stops because every skate <laughs> dealer and shop that we talk to seems to sell out of them almost instantly. Every event, <laughs> Derby for <laughs> All is here. I think that they're almost just about out of their Gumball Toe Stops and they said it's been their biggest seller this tournament. So, um, you know. Only $20, one of the cheapest things to upgrade on your skate. So. Seriously, and everyone seems to love them. So from the maker and creator of these fine and exciting products, we have the Antic Skate Boot. If you have looked at anyone's feet during this tournament, you've seen <laughs> many beautiful custom pairs on not only skaters, but refs. Of course, if you like, you know, classic, traditional skate boot, you can get a nice black skate boot from them. But it seems to me like almost everyone has gone for the custom boots. So whether it's in your team colors or your favorite colors, I have seen several red pairs here with other complementary colors. Uh, there was a ref here from Glasgow with a really beautiful yellow and black pair. Um, not terribly much of a cost for an upgrade to that custom and uh, reasonably priced, as well as, from what we hear, some of the most comfortable skates that you could possibly skate on. Slip your foot into one of those boots and find out how comfortable they are. Antic skate boots <laughs> define your sport. Check out any of the fine family of Green Monster products at grnmnstr.com. I've heard a couple of reports that uh, slipping your foot into a pair of Antec skate boots is like slipping your foot into a basket of kittens. <laughs> Which <How>? does <laughs> sometimes beg the question, why? <laughs> why do you hate kittens? <laughs> but, you know, I think what they're getting at is that they're very, very soft. <laughs> and I, I would agree with that sentiment. At Dust Devil, I tried them on, and they were amazing actually that was like the fourth time i've tried them on i'll admit i just haven't been able to purchase any yet but every time i see them i try them on just just because <laughs> what? 
<laughs> we, are, we are reading the chat, by the way. <laughs> I don't know that anyone is suggesting that you stick your foot inside a kitten, but rather maybe on top of a pile of them. <laughs> we're, we're just talking about the soft, soft fuzzy parts. <laughs> And preferably not actually stepping on the kittens. <laughs> Somebody yesterday was asking why anyone would skate on kittens and puppies. <laughs> that, that had something to do with Tara Armoff. I don't remember what. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave that to Tara. Mm -hmm. I hope that some of you um, have also been enjoying Battle for the Coast from Ventura, California this weekend. Maybe you caught a little bit of Rocket City Rumble yesterday. We brought you three tournaments this weekend, as well as a plethora of single bouts. So we're working hard for you this weekend at DNN. If you have a mind to, and you're enjoying any of the derby you've been able to watch this weekend, please give us a holler, contribute. No amount is too small. We survive and thrive on every little bit of what you send us, and we're here doing this for you, so we thank you for your contributions to DNN. We're going to take a quick break. Uh, less than five minutes until the second half. We'll catch you in a minute.
Well, hello, and uh, less than 40 seconds now until this halftime is over. I'm Mercy Less. And I'm Roxy Horror. We are invested fans right now and doing our best <laughs> to stop being dumbfounded and keep talking for your pleasure. <laughs> Score at the beginning of this second half, if you're just joining us, is 90 St. Louis, 55 Shock Exchange. Uh, just a couple seconds until we get started here. We love you too, Valphonse. We miss you like crazy. There's some Boone's Farm here with your name on it in our hotel refrigerator that is so sad because it was for you and we don't want it. <laughs> I, I, I bought two bottles for you, Val. <laughs> I was going to put one under your pillow and Justice and I <laughs> drank the other one. <laughs> Val, I'll bring it to Brouhaha for you, but I want you to know that like this was a really special gift because Roxy made sure to consult the Hellerad taste test guide to choose the best flavors just for you. <laughs> I did. There's a picture of it. There's, there's picture proof. <laughs> I love you too. I hope that you can't Paco Boone's Farm. Oh, oh, whoops, Jonathan game starting. R is on the line for New York Shock Exchange. And that's Nat King Hill for the gatekeepers. Both jammers enter the pack at about the same time, but uh, Filthy McNasty puts a hit on the St. Louis jammer that helps him take a fall. Jonathan R manages to make it up past Zombie Jesus for lead jammer. Oh, but Nat's right behind him, about a third of a lap. One-on-one <laughs> -on -one in the pack, but now uh, all of the St. Louis blockers make it up to the front. I think that's Magnum PIMP that took a fall on his way to join the uh, front wall in his pack. That's uh, something you almost never see. Might have been Percy Control, though. I don't want to call out somebody for falling that didn't fall. <laughs> They both have big, bushy black beards, so. <laughs> a dude with a black beard was playing roller derby on the track. <laughs> I think he's from St. Louis. <laughs> Ladies' night is uh, standing quite a bit behind the jam line, uh, probably intending to collect a minor and go to the penalty box. And that's uh, Batwing on the line for the gatekeepers. My rink derby worm, wife. Rinkworm for New York Shock Exchange. All right, and so Rinkworm tries to take an outside line. Magnum PIMP forces him out of the pack and all the way to the back. I believe the gatekeepers call that a soul crusher. Vader and Ace of Skates working together to take the St. Louis Jammer to the outside in the straightaway before turn one. Uh, Magnum and Batwing actually working together for a second there to hold back Rinkworm. Wow, last to pass is Drifter. Rinkworm makes it past him at the front of the pack, and he's your lead jammer. Oh, Batwing's oh. around the inside. <laughs> he stepped around Vader, and there was just no one else there to stop him. He's not lead, but that was a beautiful inside pass. And Meanwhile. it looks, <laughs> it looks like Magnum PIMP again, sort of a one-man wrecking ball in the back of the pack, takes New York's jammer to the outside of turn one, and he calls off the jam. That brings the score to 90-62. St. Louis still in the lead. And Short Knox on the line for the gatekeepers now. Jonathan R, number six, and his jeggings of power for New York. Yeah. I see double XL, Zombie Jesus, Kurt Mangle, and somebody with a black beard in the pack for the gatekeepers. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's Percy, actually. I'm not, not, not quite sure. Actually, it, it may be Juke Blocks. Three wall of New York in the front, all of St. Louis in the back. Jonathan R. juking around the back of the pack, but being held firmly by St. Louis. He finds a hole. He's up through the inside. Filthy McNasty helping him with an assist, and he's your lead jammer. But not by far. Just about somewhere between quarter and a half track behind is a uh, short knock. Again, Jonathan R. juking around the best he can. He's gotten past one blocker and calls off the jam. Probably a smart strategy by New York at this point to uh, get a couple and call it, get a couple and call it. They've got plenty of time to work that to their advantage. Just over 26 minutes left on the clock. 90 St. Louis, 64 New York. Debaucherous prime on the line for St. Louis. And ladies' night number 241 for Shock Exchange. If you're just joining us, St. Louis in white, New York in black. 
If you're just joining us, you missed a really exciting first half of play, but don't worry. It's <laughs> DNN. We've got an archive for you. Sometime in the next week, it'll be up in the archive for you to watch, watch, and rewatch. <laughs> you're welcome. See a uh, jukebox, Magnum, and Wrecking Bill in the pack of gatekeepers. Oh, oh, and so uh, prime him down on the inside line there, but right back up again. He almost made it oh. all the way through on the inside. He's a <gasps> He's successfully falling through the pack there. Oh, but it looks like he got recycled Ladies the back. Ladies' night is just leaping around oh. every St. Louis blocker <laughs> he can, but somehow ends up recycled to the back of the pack. He's I don't trying, even. <laughs> trying again on the outside line. I don't even know how Prime got through that, but he is oh, smiling big and he's game lead. Of leapfrog as a New York blocker has to jump over his jammer in order to avoid <laughs> falling on top of him. Uh, Bill going to the box. That's an unusual occurrence. Ladies' night is around Magnum PIMP, not lead, but able to score. Oh, man. Prime's still taking a beating. He's got a two-all in front. Ace of skates as well as uh, Abe Drinken and Mullen Brando. Abe Drinken and Mullen and Brando, two in the front of the pack, more often than not. And uh, they partner really well. Oh, looks like he didn't call it off soon enough. That, it looks like that was a 3-3 jam. It's a draw. <laughs> There's so much going on. I know. I, we, we are trying not to zone out. It gets a little <laughs> intense. St. Louis 93, New York 67, uh, Rinkworm on the line for New York, and uh, all of his teammates on the track taking a knee. That's Nat King Kill on the line for the gatekeepers. So yeah, Zombie Jesus and Percy Control in the pack solo for the gatekeepers at the moment. New York trying to break up a front wall of St. Louis. And uh, Nat King Kill taking an outside line around Zombie Jesus. He has one to pass in Jonathan R, but Jonathan takes him to the outside between turns one and two. Rinkworm's got to pass that two wall in the front of the pack. Percy Control moves to take a hit on him after Zombie Jesus takes a fall, so that whole front wall just sort of moved to the right and fell, and he's your lead jammer. It's like uh, New York's got the... <laughs> He, they've had the most lead jams so far since the uh, halftime. Apparently did some good adjustments. That King Kill almost through, gets recycled again, but uh, somebody's going off, uh, I, I think, for a blocking out of play penalty? Yeah, that would be Vader, and uh, I think that Ronnie Mako just uh, stopped and let him go in case he was out of play. So Nat, Nat got through that time. Calls it off. Waiting for a scoreboard update. Wow, so this is, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're definitely, definitely slowly but surely closing that gap. St. Louis, 93, New York. Oh, adjustment again, 71. I don't see a St. Louis jammer on the line. Oh, we are calling it an official timeout. Okay. I was a little concerned yeah, there for a second. It said 72, and then it said 71, so maybe there's a little discrepancy here. The uh, t time called at 22.55 left in the game. And the score is 93.71 St. Louis at the moment. Looks like Batwing is going to be jamming next for the gatekeepers. And ladies' night for New York. <laughs> it's time out, so it's time for talking. <laughs> I don't know, Mercy, what do you want to talk about? I think you should talk about Fast Girl Skates. All right. Fast Girl Skates, the very first brick and mortar roller derby store. They offer the best in clothing, skates, and gear. Can't get to their Seattle store? Check out fastgirlskates.com. Also, when purchasing your new antics, make sure to have Fast Girl Skates heat mold them for you for a better fit, more comfort, and functionality. No charge if you shop with Fast Girl Skates. You can also buy Adam Wheels at Fast Girl Skates. Uh, and gumball toe stops. <laughs> and gumball toe stops. If, if and and they stock. have told me specifically that they both, they run out of both products a lot. Not, you know, they get it right back in, but they sell. They leave the shelves quickly. Very popular. And uh, the fantastic thing about Fast Girl is that whether you are calling them on the phone, emailing them, communicating with them somehow through the internet, or lucky enough to visit the store in Seattle, same level of service, same level of personal attention, no matter what way you use to contact them, they're always going to take care of you. So 
whether you live in the continental United States, somewhere in North America, or anywhere overseas, you're getting top-level service from Pass Pro Skates. So uh, the only team that both of these teams have played is the Puget Sound. Um, the gatekeeper, the both teams beat them. The gatekeepers beat them by a wider margin than the Shock Exchange did, so we're all interested to see this bout, as the New York Shock Exchange is actually the only un undefeated team here. Although the gatekeepers are undefeated at this tournament. It's like a bat wing on the line for the gatekeepers, but um, <laughs> we're, so, we're still an official timeout. Yes, we understand it's Puget Sound, but we've all been playing around with other ways to say it this weekend because there's so many great ways to say it wrong. Yeah, I've had to apologize several times for making that mistake. Ninety-three St. Louis, seventy-one New York, twenty-two fifty-five on a stopped clock. This is the first time the chat's actually corrected me on that mistake, though. <laughs> <laughs> the best one I've heard so far is Piglet sound. Oh wow! I I just say that for oh a, I like that Alan one. Said. I like that one. Fuso sound. <laughs> <laughs> Pew legit to cue it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's all be French. <laughs> Let go. Ladies <laughs> night is on the line. <laughs> I, I hope none of those guys are mad at me. For real. Because it's the third bat I've actually pronounced that wrong. And even if it was French, <laughs> you wouldn't call it Puget. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It would be Puget. <laughs> Puget. A serious discussion going on between the. <laughs> the jammer is on the line. <laughs> <laughs> it is ladies' night. <laughs> Versus <laughs> Batwing. <laughs> is that how you say Batwing? <laughs> this is how you say Batwing. <laughs> I'm going to ask the, uh, uh, the chat to answer that question who all has St. Louis lost to? They, they haven't lost to anybody this weekend, um, and they haven't lost to anybody in a long time, I think. Um, I, I don't know what their uh, last loss was. They did lose to the uh, Puget sound last year at the uh, Spring Roll. It was Spring Roll, not Fall Brawl last year, right? Spring Roll, but only by one point. Oh, they did lose to your mom. <laughs> and that, I'm not making a joke. That's actually the team's name. No, I understand that. But it, it's still, I'm enough of a simpleton that it hasn't stopped being it's, funny it's for like <laughs> months and months now. I still laugh every time. Your mom roller derby. Is it your mom's <laughs> roller derby or is it your no, mom? No, it's your mom. <laughs> I, I don't know why they're called your mom. Mercy. Your mom skates hard. <laughs> <laughs> so many jokes. Your mom won the after party. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to repeat all the comments here. Your mom got 500 <laughs> wheels on her feet. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> I understand that, and I know some other people that uh, are a part of DNN that don't find this funny at all and are really over it, but you can always count on Mercy Less to continue laughing at a simpleton <laughs> joke for about three years. It is really funny. <laughs> Oh, oh, are we actually going to start a jam here? There's a bat wing on the line for the gatekeepers. <laughs> Only the third time I've mentioned that. Is it ladies' night for yes. stock exchange? No, it is ladies' night. <laughs> ladies' night. Magnum PIMP in the back, I'm guessing, just from the stance and the way that his positional blocking is keeping ladies' night in the back of the pack. Thought we can get in some trouble from Abe Drinken. Oh, and Abe Drinken uh, doesn't manage to hold him. That wing three gets lead. About a quarter track behind is uh, now half track behind Ladies' Night. Out but not lead. Dude, I'm still laughing at Pastor of Muppets, too. <laughs> That's a couple years worth of I still, I still think it's funny. <laughs> That one gets, goes through, gets one, calls it. Actually, uh, oh, it looks like it was 2-2. Two, two. I must have I must have missed something. Yeah, I'm waiting on the update, but so far it's only showing two points for St. Louis. It looks like 95 St. Louis, 73 New York, 
just under 22 minutes in the final half of this game. Jonathan R. on the line for New York. I think that's short knocks for St. Louis, but I didn't get a view of his jersey yet. Yeah, that's short knocks. Oh, one, one foot on the inside line, short knocks. And Jonathan R. jukes his way through the three wall of St. Louis in the back. Does a little one-on-one -on -one with uh, the St. Louis jammer on turn four. That actually helps St. Louis's jammer advance. He's got a double XL up there trying to help him with the two wall of Abe Drinking and T-Stab Tornado at the front. St. Louis is trying to get those last two New York blockers out of play. Managed to do it, and uh, he gets lead. Sorry, Short Knox gets lead, but uh, followed closely by the Shock Exchange jammer. And Sweet Tooth just about had a handle on Jonathan R, almost followed him out of the pack, and then had to let him go. Oh, my gosh. Is this how every jam is going to go? <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid so, Roxy. That was a 0-0. Zero, zero. And Wrecking Bill's going to the box again. I actually don't usually see Wrecking Bill go to the box that often. So it looks like a Percy on the line for St. Louis. Of course, I, I can't see the jersey. I'm judging by the beard shape. I think that is... Um, not Percy. I mean, but Optimus Prime. Prime. I'm sorry. Debaucher's Debaucher's Prime. Is Prime. <laughs> that's, I, that's actually who I meant and, to say. I just keep. And the other 11 ringworm. So it's 11 11. <laughs> 11 again. 11. I'm actually uh, keep getting their names mixed up for some reason, even though they're nothing alike whatsoever. It must be the beards. I'm going to blame the beards. The beards. <laughs> We're going to blame the beards on every, everything's on the beards. <laughs> every name mistake I made is because of beards. And if they win this bout, it's going to be power beards for everybody from here on out. <laughs> yes. Wow. Oh, oh my gosh. Uh, Prime almost swims his way all the way up through the inside. There's a little bit of a spill, a uh, dog pile, and then he's out for lead jammer. Prime is not easily crushed. Ladies Knight's going to take a seat in the box. That makes it a 4-2 pack right now for St. Louis. Rinkworm's getting some serious trouble from Magnum in the back of the pack. Who isn't getting serious trouble from Magnum <laughs> if they're jamming for New York? Seriously. I've, I've, I've played against Magnum before. Is he in every before. single pack, by the way? Probably. <laughs> he has, a, he has a, a pretty much a everlasting endurance, as do quite a few of the gatekeeper skaters. He's just got a beautiful sense of timing. His positional blocks are fantastic. He knows exactly when to take the hit. And just now, he takes uh, Rinkworm out on turn one. He is just staying on him, takes him oh out of gosh. turn four. Does not give up. Stretches a leg. Slows down a little bit. He's waiting for him again. Meanwhile, uh, Prime scored a grand slam. And he's scoring again. Almost. This time, Rinkworm manages to get around PIMP on the outside. He's going to take a different path. He's trying to go up through the middle of the pack. He's got two to beat at the front. And Prime will take five more. It's like the shock exchange is so uh, concentrated on their jammer that they didn't even notice Prime come through on that last pass. Drifter and PIMP taking turns, hammer and nailing him in the back. As soon as Prime comes up to the back of the pack, Rinkworm takes him down on the inside of turn four. <laughs> Mag Magnum's going to the box now. Didn't, didn't see what that call was for. 4-3 Four, pack advantage to New York right now. And they let Rinkworm go. Not your lead jammer, but able to score. They definitely see Prime now. Filthy McNasty taking Prime to the outside of turn one, and he calls off the jam. I see Nat King Kill putting on the jammer panty for the gatekeepers. 113 St. Louis, 76 New York Shock Exchange, with about 17 and a half minutes left in the second half of this game. Possibly the, the, two, possibly the two most successful jammers so far. Jonathan R, bad. number six, or should we call him Jean R <laughs> for New York? That joke's not going to get old all night. It's, uh, no. <laughs> Thanks for setting us up for after-party hilarity, guys. <laughs> Jonathan R, up around the outside of the pack. He has Drifter and Zombie Jesus to pass. Jukes around the outside of Drifter, and he's your lead jammer. That King Kill has one more uh, skater to beat, and he does. He's about a half lap behind. Right past Abe Drinken. Here comes Jonathan at the back of the pack, and Drifter is waiting for him. Tries to take him to the outside of turn one, and he manages oh. to juke around Drifter and tumbles over 
the frontmost St. Louis skater. I think that was Zombie Jesus. Yeah, he falls off the jam. It, it looks it looks like he just kind of tripped himself, but I think that he thinks that the um, other skater tripped him. Who knows what really happened? And it seemed like people sitting in the stands here might have agreed. There's a little bit of booing. Yeah. <laughs> there was no penalty called, however, so that's Batwing on the line for the gatekeepers. And Rinkworm for Shock Exchange. And we have the box, a box full of half the pack. <laughs> on each side, but yeah. uh, Magnum is standing. Oh, Rink so, uh. Rinkworm just leaps through the air, um, got himself a, a penalty. <laughs> And <laughs> St. Louis I, fans are showing him their bat wing sign and cheering <laughs> for him as he goes to the box. And he gave them a friendly smile and a wave. <laughs> I'm not being sarcastic. He really did. Yeah. <laughs> and bat wing's through. Ace of Skates rejoins the pack for New York. Bat wing is your lead jammer. This is a, a multiple power jams for bat wing at this point. I, this might be a third. It's definitely at least a second. Magnum PIMP. Uh, looks like he's going to take a seat. I don't, I don't understand what just happened there. He's not going to the penalty box. He is going to take a seat on the bench, it looks like. That one's three for five. What? I wonder, did they have too many skaters on the track? Because they've got three still and one in the box. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there, but there's a three wall of St. Louis in the back and Vader at the back of them waiting to try and take a hit on Batwing. He does, but Batwing spins and propels himself forward. Ace of Skates takes him out on turn four, and he calls off the jam. Looks like he took three points for that pass. The score now is 118 to 80, assuming it's been updated. Uh, St. Louis still in the lead. 14 and 52 left in the game. I see some comments about Batwing in the chat. He's, he has been doing excellent today. A couple people have been asking about him. Timeout, New York. As the clock is halted at 14.42. Well, yes, this could be the end of the streak. <laughs> but, you know, there's still quite a bit of period left here um, in order for, you know, New York's at a 41-point deficit right now. I feel like that's something that they could make up in a jam and a half. Um, maybe not against this team, but it's in the realm of possibility. So well, it's still anyone's game at this point. As long as the gatekeepers stay out of the box. The box is their biggest, uh, biggest enemy. Well, it looks like uh, at the beginning of this next jam, it's going to be a uh, 4-2 pack advantage to St. Louis, and Jonathan R. on the line for New York. Skating against short knocks for the St. Louis gatekeepers. Jonathan's bouncing around. Let's see, I see Drifter. Magnum and Zombie Jesus in the pack um, <laughs> with one black beard. I, I think it's Percy. Thank you so much for keeping us on our toes here uh, <laughs> in the chat. Uh, show me the derby. <laughs> <laughs> La show me the derby. It's not going to be old for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, is that show me derby because the state motto for Missouri is the show me state? Right. <laughs> <laughs> for anybody who didn't understand what, what on earth. Jammer on jammer action from turn two all the way through turn oh. four right now. Takes a ref down in the uh, middle of all that. Worked out pretty well for short knocks because oh he got through. Oh, he, he just sprinted up through the pack. Jonathan R. also takes a little bit advantage of the hole that he left in his wake on the inside. He's about a quarter track behind him chasing right now. And short knocks his lead. Calls it. Uh, Wait to see the points. <laughs> well, we all the skaters knew that it was called, but the referees had a little discussion about it. Are we having a ref time out again? I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> since all the skaters thought it was over, I guess it was over. I, uh, it looks like <laughs> Filthy's having a, another little friendly chat with the uh, St. Louis Gatekeepers fans as he makes his way to the penalty box. <laughs> um, he will fill New York's penalty box. He joins Ace of Skates, and I think that's Vader standing in the box for New York right now. I don't think New York's used to being booed. <laughs> Ladies night. Jamming for New York. <laughs> I can't do a French accent, so I'll just say it's Optimus Prime jamming for the Gatekeepers. Oh, 
Wow, uh, juking back and forth. Ladies Knight almost makes it out of the pack until Magnum PIMP hones in on him with his heat-seeking shoulder missile and takes him <laughs> to the outside of turn three. This is what the gatekeeper should be afraid of. Prime just went to the box, and uh, Magnum, one of their uh, stellar blockers, also in the box right now. Oh, joined by Double XL. Yeah, so now 3-2 pack advantage, a very light pack, but New York is favored. Ladies Knight just hops right around Zombie Jesus on the inside for five points. It's uh, Wrecking Bill fighting to get back on the... Uh, on the track for the gatekeepers. Abe Drinkin and Vader in the back, ready to trap him as a goat. Wrecking Bill's alone on the track right now for the gatekeepers. <laughs> this is not good. They don't have that big of a lead. So I'm assuming now that they've taken him out on that turn, they'll just hem him up. Ladies' Night takes another five points. Zombie Jesus was sent to the box, but um, he's trying really hard to catch up to the pack so that he can actually... Uh, block the shock exchange jammer here. Filthy McNasty rejoins. Zombie Jesus rejoins. However, oh. Pack still favors New York. Ladies Knight makes his own hole on the outside. and Oh, he's sent off. I, oh. I don't know what that penalty was. And oh, was it forearms? As he's sent off, St. Louis jammer rejoins the Pack right now. Is that prime? Yeah, that is prime. Pack is completely split, and Filthy and Ace of Skates have to let him go. Not lead, but able to score. Abe Drinken is waiting for him in the back. He swoops Ooh. around the right of him, but unfortunately takes a spill into turn four. Abe Drinken tries to uh, handle his teammate and takes his own spill on turn four. He's through now for five points. Let's see if they can make up some of that uh, some of that bleeding they had to begin the jam. Maybe, maybe not, because the time's out. So the, the score, if, if the scoreboard's cut up, which I, I believe it is, is sitting at 126 for St. Louis and 95 for the Shock Exchange with uh, 11 minutes and 13 seconds left in the game. It's only a 31-point lead now, whereas they had a 41-point lead a minute ago. Both teams looking relatively serious on the benches. Uh, looks like there's only a little bit of levity in the penalty box right now. This is going to be a power jam situation for St. Louis. Pack advantage to St. Louis. It's a 4-3 pack. It looks like we got an official timeout. They want to make sure they get this right. Stopped clock at 10.58. It looks like the score was modified. It's now 98 for the shock exchange. 126.98. I, I agree. I agree with Val. Now this is when you'd be likely to take a knee start. Looks like a Nat King kill is going to be jamming for St. Louis as soon as this uh, timeout is up. Unopposed. Probably a good choice as a jammer right now. He's had to, had really good luck all day, all all weekend, actually. I was going to say, how about his entire life? Yeah. Because I don't think I've seen anything but, like, unicorns and rainbows out of him <laughs> all weekend long. He's really sincerely magical. Nat's probably a, a good word for him. <laughs> Je m'appelle 31 points. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not 31 points 31. anymore. <laughs> <It's a laughs> Val speaking Spanish now. <laughs> oui, c'est Vince Meat. <laughs> so, so the score was modified. It now reads 126 for St. Louis, 98 for the shock exchange. I can't do math, Mercy. <laughs> <laughs> I can't either. We'll rely on Valfonce Capone <laughs> for the math. Yeah. Check your chat if you'd like to know the point <laughs> differential. Updates as warranted. So that's uh, 20, 28. I think that's correct. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you're the one actively doing math out there, Val. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a... Have you met Roller Derby? <laughs> if you have an idea, you just volunteered to do it. You guessed at the point differential. Now it's your job. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. I'm in, a, I'm in grad school for programming, but I can't figure out simple, simple subtraction at the moment because I am so excited. <laughs> is someone seriously asking what sport this is in French or just being silly? And also, <laughs> have the French come up with a different name for roller derby, or are we just calling it roller derby? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank roller you. derby. Thank you, science friction. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
All right. So there's a, there's a pack advantage for the gatekeepers now, and the entire shock exchange box is full, including the jammer. Looks to me like Ace of Skates, uh, Ladies Night, and maybe Vader? I can't see who the third blocker is from Shock Exchange. Doesn't look very happy, whoever he is. We are, we're still on an official timeout, and the officials are starting to get goofy and mock the crowd, too. <laughs> <laughs> The one standing in front of the uh, in front of the uh, pivot line there, is making faces at people. It would be really funny to see the refs heckling the crowd at some point during a game. <laughs> I'm sure that no one in uh, sanctioning or games finds that funny, but wouldn't it be hilarious <laughs> if they just turned around and mocked the crowd during a no to that was taking too long? And just turn around and tell these guys to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you can't hear themselves talk, probably. <laughs> Shh, if you guys don't quiet down, we're never going to get this started. <laughs> Okay, all the officials are off the track now. Nat King kill on the line for the gatekeepers unopposed. And St. Louis backs themselves up to the jam line and a wall. They're hanging back while... Oh. Uh, no pack there and uh, I believe, yeah, oh, no. Nope. I thought, I thought somebody was being sent off with a penalty, but... Nat King Kill makes it through easy. He's your lead jammer. Again, three wall of Magnum, Drifter, and uh, Jukebox Hero in the back. Magnum picking off the one shock exchange blocker. Drifter picking off the second. T-Stop Tornado is going to go take a seat in the box, it looks like. They're going to... Gatekeepers are going to go ahead and slow down here. Meanwhile, Ladies Night rejoins before Nat King Kill can hit the pack. He's swimming his way and juking his way around these St. Louis blockers. He doesn't really have any help, though, so. Magnum PIMP locks in on him and takes him down on the inside of turn three. Nat and King Kill is out past Jonathan R., who has rejoined the pack. It was very good news for St. Louis. I'm sure they were getting nervous there. Again, we only have nine minutes and 50 seconds left in the game. Ace of Skates rejoining the pack. Still a 4-3 pack advantage to St. Louis. Ladies' Night is trying to make it past the two wall of Drifter and Magnum PIMP in the front. Magnum takes him out on turn four and forces him back into the pack. Jam is called for an injury, possibly. I, I can't see who that is. It's a shock exchange skater. Wolfgang von Stomp. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if that's equipment failure or injury, but it seems like he is indicating something is wrong with his right leg. I'm sorry, left leg. We've got a medic on a scooter on their way over. It's been interesting. They've been running the uh, first aid equipment around on rascals all weekend. They're really pretty smart. <laughs> you always know where it is. Somebody can walk off with a bag, but they can't walk off with a scooter. Right. I'm, I'm guessing it's probably an injury because if it was an equipment failure, he probably would right. have skated off exactly. on one foot. Well, and there wouldn't be five people crowded around him listening to everything yeah. he's saying. <laughs> oh, yeah. That. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like they would have run and gotten one of the Derby for All skate techs or something. Yeah. <laughs> Are the, is Derby for All the uh, sk oh, official skate tech? he is up on his own steam. Oh, but uh, definitely uh, got the skate off of his left leg. We're not sure what his situation is, but uh, I'm sure that we'll find out soon. And he's actually he's using that left leg to push himself on his right wheels as he sits down on the bench. So They are giving him a skate. They're not handing it to anybody to repair. So I, I'm <laughs> assuming it was a leg. We are, we are full of forensics over here at yeah. TNN. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to figure it out. That's what we do. C-S-I-N-N. <laughs> C-S-I-N. <laughs> That's Batwing on the line for the gatekeepers. And Rinkworm for Shock Exchange. 
The Drifter, Double XL, Zombie Jesus, and Magnum in the pack. Three Wall of New York at the front, Abe Drinken, Ronnie Mako, and I think that's Mullen Brando. Uh, St. Louis moving forward to try and break that wall up, and they start waterfalling on the inside blockers. Oh. Batwing takes an, ex an assist from Drifter, but somehow gets forced back to the middle of the pack. Jiffer had uh, two blockers contained for a second, and one of them got loose. But Batwing's through when he gets lead. Magnum PIMP taking Rinkworm down at the back of the pack. He'll take a penalty for that and is now taking a seat in the box. <laughs> Rinkworm has Zombie Jesus and Drifter to pass, and Ronnie Mako's up there trying to help him and keep Double XL off his back. He is not lead, but able to score. Batwing's taking a second to let his pack set this one up. He just wants to score a few points to help widen the gap. Drifter in the back ready to assist with Abe Drinken. Double uh, XL takes Abe out of the way. He's got two to pass right now. Now three to pass in the front wall of New York and calls off the jam. Two points for Batwing. Widen the gap just a tiny little bit. Uh, score is now 140 to 99. St. Louis in the lead. Just so over eight minutes left they, to play. <laughs> they just got their 41 point lead back. Jonathan R. on the line. So, and short knocks for the gatekeepers. If roller derby skaters in French, you know, female skaters are jamous, that makes sense to me. But uh, I feel like if it's a dude, would it be jamour? I don't know. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm distracted by the crowd. Like stomping, stomping and chanting <laughs> and stomping and chanting for their team. Wow, oh just my leaping gosh. around the inside of the pack over the apex, leaping around the inside of Ronnie Mako. That was an amazing effort by Short Knox. Pile up on turn four. Jonathan R. barely making it out of that pile up, and now he's got to battle uh, 210 from St. Louis at the front, who has to let him go. That's uh, Juke Blocks, I believe. Front wall of New York, Filthy McNasty holding back the St. Louis jammer, and he calls off the jam. That was a 3-1 pass. Uh, looks like the score is at uh, 143 to 100, St. Louis. Shock Exchange is going to have to work really hard here at the end to, uh, to close that gap. Oh, uh, 143 to, to 99. I think they just updated. No? No, now we've updated 101 New York, 143 I, St. Louis. I only saw that ref hold up one finger. Maybe it's just me. Just under six and a half minutes, ladies' night jamming for New York. And that's prime jamming for St. Louis. Three wall of New York in the front, no pack. Wow, and... Uh, Jeffrey manages to take down the St. Louis Jammer when he's almost passing through the pack, but oh. to little effect because he's out and lead Jammer right behind him, ladies' night. Prime has a Jammer on Jammer with him. I th I, I'm, I'm guessing he's trying to run down the clock, but because he's not quite close enough to uh, pull a full recycling him back into the pack. Pack is uh, quite a bit separated again. Mullen Brando, the sole New York blocker up front there. So Abe Drinken and uh, Filthy McNasty tighten it up. Oh, here come the jammers. All right, it remains to be seen. We got a 3-3 jam, so we ran, ran down the clock a little bit. For those of you doing math, that means that the score probably didn't change. <laughs> That's about the level of math we're at here <laughs> right now at the end of this fantastic and exciting spring roll. So, uh, okay, I'm going to say a 42-point lead. It looks like it's 146 to 104, St. Louis. <laughs> I did math. Ringworm number 11 in black on the line for New York. I see Nat King Kill on the line for St. Louis. Uh, officials are making a... Oh, is Jeffrey getting a... Sent out. Uh oh. Out of the room. Do you guys remember the Kibbles and Bits commercial for dog food? I want someone to do jeggings and beards. Jeggings and beards. <laughs> I, I think uh, I think Jeffrey was just uh, excused from the game for uh, I, w I would assume too many penalties. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I, th I think he fouled out. I, I don't remember him being in the box that many times, but. And who else is here comes Filthy. 
grinning at St. Louis fans again. He's really kind of wearing their colors. Yeah, he is. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. I wonder if they get confused. <laughs> My new male derby talk show is going to be called Jeggings and Beards. Yes. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> we have so many good people watching and typing right now. Matt can kill on the line for the gatekeepers. Three two pack advantage right now for St. Louis. Rinkworm tries to jump the apex as well as Magnum PIMP. PIMP is not having it. Opens his wingspan to say, uh, you're not getting through here. Nat's at the front. Oh, it's a big takeout on Nat. I, I didn't see who that blocker was, but he is through. So that guy, when, when he does go down, which isn't very often, he's up lickety split. I've never seen him even pause after he gets hit down. He's got a buoyancy about him. He just doesn't stop moving. Rink where I'm taken out on turn two. Zombie Jesus being sent off for a major. And Nat's already scoring. Leaps around the inside of Jonathan R. He oh. had one to beat in Ace of Skates, and he's a round drifter and calls off the jam. I'm just going to wait for the scoreboard to update and reread it here rather than trying to guess this time. It looks, it looks like we're holding at 150 to 105 St. Louis. Ladies night for New York. I think, I'm not sure what the crowd is chanting, but it has three syllables and it's loud. And it looks like they're doing a forward wave as well. <laughs> Instead of that sort of, you know, passing the wave on to the person next to you, they're all just waving their hands in front of their faces. We've only got three minutes and 20 seconds left in the game. Batwing jamming for the gatekeepers. Oh. Wow. So uh, Big hit by Magnum. Yeah. Magnum chasing Ladies Knight up to the inside, takes him outside on turn four again. Oh, Batwing beating the pivot in the uh, second turn. Stir for lead. Drinking. Here comes oh Ladies Knight. Gosh. Magnum takes him out on turn four again, gives himself a leap. I think he a little congratulatory thing, and, and he's... Uh, he thought he was going to the box. But. Right, he was assured <laughs> by the referee that he's not, told to rejoin the pack. Unfortunately, <laughs> that has allowed uh, Ladies' Night to advance to the front of the pack. Drifter is holding him back right now and has to let him go. There was a Drifter and Wrecking Bill up in the front with the two wall out a little bit too far. Mm. Batwing currently scoring points, though. He's still got two and a half minutes left in the game. Ladies night coming up on the back of Zombie oh. Jesus, but that pack is spread out to about half a track right now. And batwing through on the inside by Mall and Brando. That was a four pointer. Ladies night chasing up the outside. He's through for four points. I, I think we might might be running the clock down here. That's how it appears to me, and frankly, you know. I think we're at a point in deficit right now where it's not likely that we're going to have some kind of a last jam save, but, you know, feel free to debate me. <laughs> I'm not going <laughs> to. <laughs> oh, not you. I mean, I mean the Derbyverse. We're all about debate in the Derbyverse. <laughs> debate opinions and fandom. Let's hear it. Oh, the crowd's going insane. That one's getting high fives from Drifter. I, I want to yell so badly right now. I and, know. And I'm trying not to yell into the mic and blow all your eardrums <laughs> out. Batwing's Batwing's one of my best friends. He's, he's one of my derby wives. It's huge feats of self control over here on the microphone. Yes, today. I'm. I'm <laughs> oh, right, and jeggings. Derby I'm, is also about jeggings, but don't tell Hella Red. <laughs> okay, I, I I think that was short knocks on the line for the keepers. Time out. Uh, oh my God. Okay, so a score update. There is one minute and nine seconds left. This is probably the last jam, but you never know. Um, the score is 158 to 109. You do the math. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a hint. It's less than 50. <laughs> yeah, just barely. <laughs> oh, you know, I wish I had some kind of calm gear on so that I could communicate with the cameraman and ask him to give you guys some um, gratuitous jigging shots. 
but unfortunately, I would have to sort of wave my hands and grab his attention as he is directly across from me all the way across the entire track. <laughs> and, you know, kind of busy doing his job instead of watching us, so. <laughs> Dude, Val, after all the years of gratuitous shots of dump trucks outfits, you can't possibly deal with one gratuitous shot of Jonathan's power jeggings? Come on. Those jeggings are amazing. Come on. They have... <laughs> Jigging <laughs> exploitation. That's They're, my next film. My next animated film is a jigging exploitation movie. Oh my god! They're not just jeggings. They're customized. Oh, is that is that Magnum running, screaming into the crowd, holding his skates? I think it's Magnum because that's what his skates look oh, like. Oh yeah. Well, and he's yeah, taken <laughs> quite a number of yeah. trips. He's made himself a little burrow there in the penalty box. So I'm not surprised. But again, if I were uh, New York, I'd give him MVP. Yeah. <laughs> Here comes 88, barreling his way through the pack. Ace of Skates takes him down on the straightaway between turns four and one, while Power Jeggings is lead jammer. Oh, 55 seconds left on the period clock. Minute 30 left on the jam clock. I just, I, I don't, I don't think there's enough time for them to, to do much, even if they were to call it off and get another jam in. Two wall on the front, one to beat now in 86D. Jonathan calls off the jam. Oh. 35 seconds and ticking down. Call the time out, New York. <laughs> surprise, surprise. It's just got interesting. <laughs> Not really. It's been interesting. <laughs> it's been interesting all weekend. This, this would have to be an epic jam. The whole crowd's on their feet, standing around the track. The score is 158 to 114, St. Louis. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was like, 33 seconds left on the period clock, but that really doesn't mean anything because we get two minutes in the jam. Got the Pioneer Valley guys standing out here on the end of the track. I'm not sure who asked earlier, but um, I feel like uh, Plastic Patrick has some of the best outfits I've ever seen in roller derby, and I think I may have induced a dump truck versus Plastic Patrick outfit off what? at some point during Wolf the Big Five season this year, so stay tuned <laughs> for that. Yes. Of course, Dump Truck has derby skins working on his side, so. Yeah, but Plastic Patrick, have you seen? Oh, my God. Yeah. I don't think he needs anyone working on his side. Most amazing stuff I, I've ever seen. I didn't even know his name, but I know exactly who you're talking about. <laughs> Rinkworm on the line for New York in what might be the last jam of this game. As long as it's longer than a few seconds. Oh, they put more time on the clock. We have a, a minute 12. Never mind. We have yeah, a minute 12. Left. We'll shoot that during your lunch break. <laughs> Uh, Batwing's jamming for the gatekeepers. I have a beautiful picture of me in plastic in that green outfit at London. So, yes, <laughs> I, I've seen it up close and personal. And if I had an ass like that, I'd wear that, too. <laughs> no modesty from the DNN crew today. <laughs> gatekeepers are asking the crowd to cheer. I don't, I don't think they really had to ask, honestly. I see uh, Percy standing without skates on on the side of the track. I thought he was skating. Interesting. Okay. Both jammers hit the pack. One falls on the outside of turn two. One falls on the inside of turn two. Rinkworm's back up on his feet faster. And uh, Jonathan R is at the front trying to break up the two wall of St. Louis. Oh. He's through and oh. lead jammer. I, oh, Batwing's in the box. This is now I, a power jam for New York. This is really the, the, the period clock's about to sound wow. here. Wow, and so on his way around the outside, Rinkworm takes out. Uh, period clock is up. Number 11 and number zero for St. Louis, Zombie Jesus and Prime. He's approaching the pack. Pack is almost at a standstill. He moves around. Prime on the outside slips back into the inside, but he's got a three wall of St. Louis to beat. No pack. He's through with five points. The scoreboard says the shock exchange is up to 123. St. Louis at 158. Zombie Jesus joining his jammer in the box as another blocker is released from St. Louis. We've got fi about 50 seconds left in this jam. Four wall of New York in the back right now. Rinkworm moves through and has two to beat at the front. <laughs> crowds. They crowds have to let him insane. go. That's five more points for New York. So uh, we're at 158-128. That's a, that's a lot of points to make up in 30 seconds. Batwing re-enters from the box. He approaches the back of the pack. Three wall of New York, four wall of New York, waiting for him at the back. Filthy McNasty, Jonathan R, T-Stop Tornado, and Ladies Knight slowing the back of the pack, trying to hold him. Meanwhile, 
Rinkworm has collected five more points. And Batwing's on his uh, initial pass, I believe. Four wall of goth. I just said goth. <laughs> Four wall of shock exchange at the front right now. Four wall of somebody from New York. <laughs> <laughs> Batwing oh. leaps through the pack. And that's the game. <laughs> game Magnum ends. and Percy Batwing are back. Batwing looks completely dumbfounded. <laughs> Look at the expression on his face. <laughs> Everyone rushes the track for hugs and congratulations and high fives. <laughs> Unofficial score, according oh to the God. scoreboard, 158 St. Louis, 138 New York Shock Exchange. <laughs> they narrowed it down to 20 points there. Oh, and the chat goes wild. New York also going wild over on their bench, cheering for St. Louis. <laughs> This impressed, is, uh, impressed you know, they are. If you're joining us now, you're watching History on DNN. St. Louis Gatekeepers have just defeated New York Shock Exchange's Virgin Streak. They had never lost a game since their inception. They're a, it was a, it's only a 20-point game, 158 for St. Louis and 138 for the Shock Exchange. Yeah, there's a Beards. Comment. Thanks, Science Friction. Yeah, Once I, again. <laughs> I fully expect at this point, you know, for, for St. Louis to go home to their merch laboratory and develop a series of black beards. I fully expect somebody to show up at the after party with permanent markers and start drawing beards on people. <laughs> <laughs> Even better. Uh, the entire track is full as if this were like the last bout of a, of a with the tournament or something. It's, the entire track is full of fans. There is a uh, gentleman carrying a sweatshirt right now that's fantastic. <laughs> the back of it says, not tonight, ladies. I'm here to skate. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> a shock exchange now. Giving high fives <laughs> around the circle. Got to commend them for uh, that uh, amazing streak. Yeah, that's, I mean, absolutely, you know, the strongest team in men's roller derby throughout their early history. And uh, this is a first. I feel like this is just uh, another parallel you can point to demonstrating the evolution of skill and the growth of MRDA and men's roller derby right now at this moment in time. There's a question, what was the shock exchange's win streak? I believe that is the answer to that is forever. <laughs> well, according to everyone else who's been beaten by them too long. Yeah. But um, somebody on the chat.